Welcome you to friends and family to today's cooking edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So today is actually Wednesday and I decided I wanted to do some cooking ahead for the next few days. I'm finding that if I cook with leftovers, it enables me to uh, spend a little bit more time with my mom and not having to worry about getting home to, you know, make a meal, clean up from making a meal. And the other thing is I've been investigating some recipes that are naturally gluten-free. So one of the things that really cracks me up is you will see gluten-free stickers on items that are naturally <laughs> gluten-free. So it is sort of a buzzword right now. And while I don't have, um, a total intolerance to gluten, I am following the GAPS diet based on having some autoimmune diseases and also food sensitivity tests. And I will continue to leave the link to the Everly Well food sensitivity test that um, it's the website. So there's a variety of levels um, in case you have interest y'all. And if you want to know more about the GAPS diet, believe me, there is a ton of information out on the web. So actually today, I want to make a meatloaf. Well, I normally put panko breadcrumbs in my meatloaf, which is not gluten-free, but I have some gluten-free bread that we made, um, or I made on the channel. I feel funny saying we made it together since you weren't here, but y'all have been so faithful to watch and comment, and I am so excited about being over 4,000 subscribers, so welcome to all you new Thank you to all my returning. And if you just happened upon this video based on a gluten-free tag that I put, my name is Kim. I am trying to go on a health journey to improve some autoimmune issues that I'm having. And for those of you who don't know, I have psoriatic arthritis, which is thought to be autoimmune as well as systemic lupus. All right. Let's get into this meatloaf. I hope you'll stay tuned. So I'm actually going to be making a two pound meatloaf, but I want to show you something, y'all. This is butcher box, one pound ground beef, no antibiotics ever, no added hormones. And as we talked in an earlier video, the antibiotics were put into, are put into feed to uh, help the animal to grow faster. So mm, it's good to know there's no antibiotics. It's 100% grass-fed, grass-finished. Okay, now here, guys, look at the difference in just the size. Now, this is a little bigger in diameter, but even the, the look of the meat, and this is Simply Nature from Aldi, 100% grass-fed ground beef, and, and it's the ingredients are organic ground beef. So, I have to tell you, I prefer honestly <laughs> the Aldi version not only is it less expensive I find it tastier and that that's just a personal preference I'm sure both of them are better than um, grain-fed hormone and antibiotic loaded <laughs> so here we go first thing I'm going to do and y'all may notice I have on a glove and I'm gonna share a little something something about you about myself I get really grossed out with raw meat um, especially if I have to touch it <laughs> so just wearing a glove to mix up this meatloaf is gonna help me out a lot so first thing I'm gonna do is get this out of the package and we'll set this aside to go out to the trash and let me wash my hands here real quick. So there's a hundred thousand ways to make meatloaf <laughs> and I am um, just gonna use kind of a made up recipe. So I have some frozen onions that I'm working through that came from Azure. And this is gonna be an onion rich <laughs> meal, but I think onions really do add a lot of flavor to meatloaf. So I'm always glad to have it. Now, Instead of using the panko breadcrumbs, I am going to be using our gluten-free bread. I am just going to uh, 
uh, cut the equivalent of about two pieces of toast, I guess you would say. And then we're gonna dice that up. Or you know what, actually, I think I can, yeah, we're just gonna crumble it in. So the gluten-free bread, or really any homemade bread, you know, not having the additives and preservatives in it, it does not stay fresh as long. So if you're like me and you're a single person eating a loaf of bread, not only do I recommend you refrigerate it, you may want to cut your loaf into sections and freeze it. That will help you with not losing bread due to mold, etc. I do find the gluten-free bread that I made to be tasty. Um, you notice I haven't eaten a ton of it because um, too much bread makes too much kim, <laughs> but um, I have enjoyed having it. I did make a grilled cheese with it, as was suggested on the King Arthur recipe. Uh, was it the most amazing grilled cheese I'd ever had? Absolutely not. <laughs> was it a grilled cheese? It was. So I do like having the option to have bread. I will continue to investigate recipes because I'm not really convinced that this is like the be all end all for gluten, gluten free recipes. A couple of you actually also asked why if the flour from King Arthur contains xanthan gum, why am I adding additional? <coughs> Excuse me y'all. <coughs> so let me kind of liken that to when we make bread in the bread machine and I add additional vital wheat gluten. Um, so while it does contain um, xanthan gum, in order to get the best thickening and texture, you need to add additional. So that's my best explanation for that. So I've added some garlic. I'm gonna add some Worcestershire. Now, I will tell you that this is not gluten-free. You can buy gluten-free. This has, as does everything in the world, a little bit of soy flour. I've never found that it bothers me, but if you want to be a purist and not utilize, just a little salt, guys, not utilize any gluten, which I'm finding very difficult, you may want to go ahead and invest in some gluten-free Worcestershire. Now let's all observe a moment, moment of silence. This is my last container of sweet onion jam. <sighs> I'm going to really, really miss having this on the shelf. Um, I will be making more and I've put about a quarter cup and then I also like topping my meatloaf with it as well. So what else do we want to put in here? Ah, some fermented ketchup. And this is also the end of a jar, but I'm happy to report y'all. Let me grab a spatula. <clears throat> Those <clears throat> fermented carrots and radishes that we did on a video a few, a couple weeks ago. Oh my word, the radishes. I put the gochugaru, the, the spicy Korean um, pepper in it. Oh my goodness, y'all. So, 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 so good to mention it. So good. And where I have really enjoyed it is having it on salads. Um, it just really adds a tang and you're getting your daily dose of fermented vegetables. I do have some probiotics, some chewable little gummies that I think have helped me. But honestly, if I can get my probiotics from a food versus a food that I make versus, you know, taking a gummy, I'm going to prefer that always. I think your body assimilates probiotics better when it's a natural part of your food. Just my two cents. All right, I will leave a link to this below. Y'all, this is a USA pan. 
It is a meatloaf pan, so it has the insert. What's so great about it is there are holes in the insert, so all of the fat will go under this little attachment, and your meatloaf isn't greasy and mushy and soggy. It really changes, I think, how your meatloaf will taste. If you like to use the beef fat in other applications, add a little bit of the juices and the fat to rice. Um, there's a variety of uses for it. One of the things I really admire about um, Three Rivers Homestead, Jessica over at Three Rivers Homestead, is she makes use of everything. So if she had a USA pan and if <laughs> there were drippings left from the meatloaf, she would definitely be reincorporating that. Now, because her son has anaphylactic food allergies, they are a dairy-free family, so that makes it a little harder for them to get certain nutrients. So that is one of the ways that she will add vitamin-rich, even though high in fat, items back into her food. And guys, fat is not bad. Too much fat is bad. And actually, manipulated fats, so some of the hydrogenated oils, in my opinion, are worse for you than something that is a more naturally occurring fat, uh, such as lard or tallow, which is beef fat. All right, enough jibber jabber can. So I am going to start mixing this up. I'm gonna give a little shout out here to my good friends, Peggy and Norm over at Crazy for Retro. Y'all, they just celebrated their 54th anniversary. She has amazing vintage collections so knowledgeable as is norm as well um he collects a lot of vintage toys so there's really something for everyone gal or uh guy you know depending on what you like to collect i just find them to be delightful people we speak pretty much every day great christian couple so go out and Take a look at one of their most recent videos. Wish them a happy anniversary and tell them Kim from the Wellness Homesteader sent you. Okay, I am going to put at least one egg, if not two, in here. And the reason I like eggs in my meatloaf is it kind of helps it bind together. And this being the first time I've used a gluten-free product in my meatloaf, not really sure how it's gonna come out. I usually use one egg per pound, and this was a two-pound batch, if you will, of meatloaf. So, yeah, let's go ahead and hit the other one. Y'all, I don't know if you can tell. See the egg yolk? I've been letting my girls free range, unless it's snowing or sleeting, which it was day before yesterday. Um just because I don't want them to um, get their feet overly chilled. I'm probably too protective of my, my girly girls, but I love them so much. Uh, but they are out eating worms, my lilies, <laughs> just the greens. I cannot believe how beautiful the eggs look, how well they are laying. And even though they slowed down a little bit in the winter, I was getting two to three. Now I'm getting three to four. And I also wanna say something, y'all. I made a very insensitive comment on one of my videos about the fact that Miss Violet does not appear to be the smartest chicken, you know, in the universe. But I made a rude comment about, um, I hate to even say it again, about the short bus. And I offended someone, and for that I'm truly sorry. Shoot, take it. <clears throat> um, I, I'm not going to offer you an excuse. I'm just going to say it was a thoughtless comment. I hope you all will forgive me. I will guard my words more closely in the future. Um, I'm not one to make fun of people with disabilities, so yeah, I apologize. Whoops. All right. <clears throat> yeah, so now all I'm going to do, take my clean hand is we are gonna pack this in here. Now, some people like to do like a ketchup and brown sugar topping. 
Um, what I like to do because uh, my, oh my gosh, my uh, sweet onion jam has balsamic vinegar and brown sugar in it. I will usually use that as a topping, but you know, feel free to use whatever you want. Some people like cheese in their meatloaf, you know, whatever floats your boat. So y'all, I don't know if I ever finished my thought. So um, Peggy and Norm sent me this set of bowls. They belong to her brother who sadly passed away a little over a year ago. And I have gotten more than good out of them. I use them constantly. One of them I use for my chicken feed, to cart out chicken feed every day. Well, every day that I need to feed them because they have a gravity fed feeder, but they have stainless steel bowls are just the bomb and they're so expensive. So thank you again, Peggy and Norm for that. All right, so here's what our meatloaf is looking like. I am going to put a little bit of the sweet onion jam on top. And because this is a two pound meatloaf, uh, this is going to take about an hour and a half at 350. So I thought, wow, you know, I kind of hate to run the oven that long, you know, because I hear cha-ching, cha-ching from my electric bill. Uh, but <laughs> with the warmer weather, I haven't been using any heat or air conditioning yet. I have been using some ceiling fans. So I guess I can afford to make a meatloaf, but I thought, well, why not um, kind of double up and do this new onion recipe? So let me wash up, get the glove off, get all of these things that have touched me out of the way, everything sanitized, and we will get to making our Tennessee onions. Stay On tuned. to our next cooking item, and we are going to make Tennessee onions, the easy cheesy casserole you have to try. So not only is this gluten-free, it is also low in carbohydrates from not using potatoes and sweet potatoes and things like that as the GAPS diet recommends. I'm finding I kind of want a creamy ooey gooey side dish sometimes and something to go with my meatloaf. So here's what you're going to need. You are going to need patience <laughs> and a lot of chopping ability. So I'm gonna be using this great big bowl here. You'll need two and a half pounds of onions. So depending on where you shop, uh, I purchased my Vidalias at Aldi and it came in a three pound bag. So I just took a few of the onions out. Um, then you're gonna need some spices. Now it does call for thyme, which is not my favorite. Um, a teaspoon of thyme, a teaspoon of parsley, a teaspoon of garlic salt, a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon dry mustard, quarter teaspoon cayenne pepper. So that's the mix that it recommends. I personally love rosemary and sage and parsley and garlic in my onion mixtures. If you've watched my special occasion casserole uh, video, which I got from Miss Gay over at Apron Strings, that's my personal preference. You could also use dill if you like that. We are going to cut up all of our onions. We're gonna put them in this ginormous bowl. <laughs> we are going to add all of our spices. Oh, and did I say crushed red pepper? Yeah, um, cayenne pepper. And I don't know if I said that or not, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Once we get them into the casserole, we're gonna dot that whole casserole with butter and we're going to add some sharp cheddar cheese and some Gouda cheese on the top of it and then we're gonna bake it. So let me get to chopping. I'll bring you back when we get ready to add all of the different spices and get it into our casserole dish. Stay tuned. So here is our approximately two and a half pounds of onions. I'm sure that you can cut this down however suits you best. Now I'm gonna add my own spin on seasoning. So a little bit of salt, not a tremendous amount. And this again is the red Korean pepper flake, the gochugaru. And you could use cayenne. You could leave it out if you don't like spicy, but I think it's going to add 
a depth of flavor and a little heat so that our onions aren't just bland and boring. So some ground mustard. And I'm just like covering it generously. <laughs> some crushed rosemary. Love rosemary. Some parsley, which will give it some color. Along with our other herbs. So we've got some red, some yellow, and some green. And then I am going to add some of my homegrown sage. Y'all, I can't wait for herbs to be growing again because... I really went through the herbs this year. I did not have an overabundance. Now, I will say with sage, y'all, um, too much sage can actually be a little bit on the bitter side. So, you know, use that with caution. And then, because I can, <laughs> I'm gonna add some freshly ground black pepper. And doesn't that look delish, right? I like using the big bowls because I feel like it really helps give you a larger surface area so that you can get things really well mixed. So let's just give this a really good mix. And what I did, y'all, is I just sliced each onion in half, turned the half on its side, and cut it this way. So we're going to have actually, this is two, but like onion pieces, not diced up uh, little diced onions i i want to have a little bit of body to this mm, smells good and these onions are the sweet onions or vidalia onions so they're not overpoweringly like cloyingly oniony um it'll just have a nice depth of flavor as a reminder y'all save those onion skins and onion ends great for onion broth or adding to uh, any type of broth really to give it some additional flavor. We're going to spray our 13 by 9 pan pretty generously here with some olive oil cooking spray. Let's get our onions everybody in the pool here. <laughs> yeah, just ignore the ones that are flinging on the floor. I can feel them hitting me. <laughs> okay. So, you know, that's a pretty healthy casserole, right? So let me set that aside. And now we need to put our butter on. So it's a quarter cup, which is about half of a stick if you're using like a traditional stick of O butter. And you just want to distribute this evenly. So I'm just cutting it into small pieces with a knife that is totally overkill for butter, but it's already dirty, so yeah, why not? I think this is going to be really, really tasty and interesting. I think it will make a nice side dish since I'm avoiding, um, you know, high carb foods right now like potatoes sweet potatoes even rice um you know which is part of the gaps diet i do not have any food sensitivity from the ever everly well test to those items i'm simply trying to give my gut a rest um and you might not think onions are giving my gut a rest but i do because <laughs> once they're cooked y'all they will be nice and mild and flavorful, no problem. All right. So there is that part of my reach. Now, I could not find Gouda in a block to shred. So what I am going to do, and Gouda is a very soft cheese, has a tendency to stick together. It's actually one of my favorite cheeses. So I really enjoy it, but I am not having the best of luck even separating these slices. So I'm just going to place the four ounces 
This is a five ounce package, so we'll leave a little bit. And I might have eaten one slice already. Okay, there we go. And this is Sargento brand, but I would say any brand that you can find would be great. Wow, it's kind of shredded, right? <laughs> I've never seen cheese stick together quite so badly. Okay. So I'd say the idea here is just to get it as evenly distributed as you possibly can. Wow. Yeah, this is like not easy, guys. <laughs> but we'll just do the best we can, right? Because it's all going to melt into some cheesy deliciousness. And I think we'll be good to go. All right. Wow. Okay. Maybe just a little bit more right there in that spot. Okay. And we'll save that little bit additional for another recipe. Now, in my um, food processor here, I am going to uh, shred my cheddar. So to save your ears, let me do that. Bring you right back. All right. So we have our shredded cheddar. We'll distribute on top of that. Doesn't this sound good, guys? I mean, it may not be your typical carb-rich dish, but I think it's going to be really, really good. And I like onion in anything, but I especially like cooked onions. They take on a very sweet flavor. If you're a person that does not like the wet, crunchy texture of onions, that, of course, will change with this application. So I hope you'll give it a try. Right, the next instructions say... Cover with aluminum foil, bake at 350 uh, about 40 minutes, then we're gonna uncover it, bake it an additional 30 minutes. So let me get this in the oven. I will bring you back in about an hour and a half when everything is finished. All right, y'all, so excited about this. So here is our meatloaf, and you may notice there's a little bit of like white marks and that is actually the bread so let's only i'm going to be eating this y'all so i'm going oh i'm going to double dip <laughs> hang on y'all are sliding what on earth here we go so this is what our meatloaf looks like let's take a taste mm. Very, very, very good. I'm just a little worried about the bread, but y'all gives it some body. It's actually quite tasty. And now for our Texas onion casserole. Oh, with cheese. This really looks delish. Bite. <laughs> mm. Ooh, that's hot. Let's blow it a little more. Y'all may be wondering, what on earth happened to your microwave? Well, the decorative front fell off. I need a new microwave, guys. It doesn't affect um, the actual microwave itself. It, it was all just a plastic piece that cracked. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Y'all need to try this. Wowie, wowie. Buttery. Onion flavor without being overpowering. Definitely taste the herbs. Not overly spicy. And if y'all aren't worried about making it gluten-free, it would be really good with maybe some panko. Mix it with a little butter. Make kind of a... Um, not a crust exactly, but a little crumble for the top of it. That would be good as well. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video, looking at ways that you can take regular recipes and alter them a bit to be gluten-free, as well as trying new things that would comply with the GAPS diet without sacrificing taste. I think that's a really important thing when you're trying to stick to a new way of eating 
is making sure that it's sustainable and that you do like the food that you're making. So I hope to see you all on Saturday. I have a lot going on towards the end of this week. So if by chance I'm late getting a video up, you know, y'all, all is well. Mom is about the same. Thank you all for your thoughts and prayers. She just really isn't making any progress as far as therapy goes. So I'm just not sure what's ultimately um, going to happen as far as her transfer back to assisted living. So I'll see you all very soon. Please go ahead and smash that like button. And hey, if you aren't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You know, the one down there and then ring the bell to be notified of all the new uploads. So I'll see you all very soon. And in the meantime, be healthy, be well, be blessed. Take care.